That was a massive, massive blunder. That is a huge move from Jan, and he spots ideas like this in his sleep. Rook e8 is what you want to play. Watch out, bishop h5. There's a skewer there. The queen is in the front. That means you're going to lose material. So, oh, wait, he walked right into it. Wow. And Jan reacts slightly. Magnus, he's blundered. Um, so big stakes on the line uh, in this game, but also in the opening phases. We see another English opening. That last game between them with colors reversed was also in English as uh, Magnus didn't I uh, kind of get the ideal position from the offers you mentioned here. It's a four knights variation and uh, we see pretty much a reversed Sicilian Robert. Um, it's an open Sicilian just with reverse colors. So white has an extra tempo and okay, this is solid stuff from Magnus, all been seen before. What do you make of the early uh, decisions here. I think a good decision by Magnus. He clarified some things early on. Right now, uh, it's tempting. You see a pin for white to play pawn d4 to d5, but this is standard in, across a number of different openings. Black can then play a6 and kick the bishop out of there. So this isn't winning material for white. Uh, this is just standard play from Magnus. And I have to say, he's doing really well because he's only spent 12 seconds, and now Jan is about to approach a minute spent. Yeah. Any seconds you can eat away at your opponent's clock tends to be a bit of a moral victory. And uh, Magnus does have experience in this type of position with both colors. Um, he actually lost a game from the white side, I think not this last couple of moves, but uh, this whole variation in general up until just a move or two ago. Um, he lost from the white side against Nodibek Abdusatarov um, in Vikanze a couple of years ago. He studied it uh, in depth, Magnus. So definitely an opening win for him, Robert. Uh, feels like Jan... This is already borderline uh, too long, I think, um, yet to come up with anything. Ultimately, he might just castle. He might push a pawn forward to e4, take the center. But um, black is rock solid. That's all you want. Now it's only a minute between them almost. And we see the feature chat there. Magnus is just savage in this format. He is unbelievable no matter what the format is. Maybe he wouldn't be so good at loser's chess. He doesn't lose very often. But otherwise, uh, he is doing great. And as you said, David, I think you're spot on that Jan is investing too much time here. Perfect is the enemy of the good, especially when the clock is ticking. And now Magnus can look at this just like it's any other game where he didn't actually give away time odds. He's just playing normal chess. Yeah, <laughs> just it's just a normal position. Ultimately, you just have to get castled. You just have to get your pieces out. You'll get a chance later um, at some point to mix things up, but you need more time than your opponent. Now it's only 30 odd seconds between them. Um, long think, wrong think is uh, kind of the cliched uh, statement here, but for Armageddon especially, that is important. And D5, I mean, you predicted it, Robert. This is elementary stuff, uh, breaking the pin. If the bishop retreats, you break it again. You push a pawn to B5 and uh, this diagonal, you don't lose material. Maybe you lose a pawn, but you get the bishop power at least for it. Um, it feels like Jan, that's a step in the wrong direction. Um, especially if he's freestyling now, which it looks like he is. I fear for him. Well, we know that Magnus loves freestyle chess. He created or is in part of a whole league uh, involved in that. And you see that Jan steps back with his bishop. Back to e2 it goes. That frees up the black knight. And the good news for Jan is that he, he must win this game. There's plenty of life left. The bad news is he's not really up on time anymore. So he will have the pressure. The onus is squarely on his shoulders. And look at that knight backing up to its starting square because instead of just going to e7, which looks more active for now, think about the future. Where do your pieces belong? The c5 square is juicy. Mm-hmm. Beautiful outpost. Spotted, of course, by Magnus Carlsen here. Um, I'm pretty sure he's going to just land his knight on that square and... Smile, his pieces are all very healthy. The bishop will come out soon as well. It's just about whether he castles. There we go, he castles first. And uh, now the knight lands on c5. Where are white's pawn breaks? I know um, that's kind of how you like to kind of assess a middle game, right, Robert? And right now, unless white's breaking with f4, which might be tempting while the black queen sits on uh, this diagonal. Uh, yeah, looks unlikely to happen now. But unless white's breaking with that move, hard to know where the uh, kind of life is coming from for white's position. You're asking all the right questions, and Magnus is answering them when, whenever either of us asks before we can finish our sentence. So the queen slid out of the diagonal. Uh, Bishop f5, look at these pieces. All of black's pieces have a purpose. White is a bit passive right now. Uh, you're indicating that c2 and d3, there is light square control for black. And remember, white needs to win this game, not just equalize from a slightly worse position at the moment. 
Yeah, um, equalising this one is, uh, I guess, the first step for Jan, but he can't be too happy with the position uh, that he's got right now. I wouldn't be surprised if Magnus kind of just centralises his rooks and waits uh, for a moment to um, kind of open up the position on his terms. Of course, there's more committal things that could be done. You could land a knight onto d3 at some point. There might be tactics, so I don't know if you can rush in. e4 would cement that square, but then you would open up the white, light, uh, white dark squared bishop, so I'm not sure how keen Magnus is to commit with a draw being sufficient maybe he will try and force the issue ideas that come to mind also would include rook b8 b5 all these pawn breaks Robert but uh, finally Magnus is starting to spend a bit of time and the uh, minute difference between them has been re-established yeah, that's important because Jan, he needs to press Magnus on the clock. We know how quick Jan likes to play chess, and he is worse. There's no question about it. He, it's easier to play from the black side. But my question is really like, what, what would Wumpus do? Right? That's the big question. What would Wumpus <laughs> do? Because Dr. Impossible Wumpus, and like, that's the uh, only thing that can answer this question. How do you beat Magnus Carlsen when he is playing this well and this solidly? Wow, Robert, I was not expecting that cameo, uh, I must admit. <laughs> How do you beat Magnus Carlsen? What would uh, what would Wimpers do? Wow. F4, clearly, that's what would <laughs> that's what would happen. Whoa. F4, fight fire with fire. Otherwise, it's just one-way traffic. If Black shuts things down, it would have been Magnus, all about Magnus. Suddenly, game on. That is a huge move from Jan, and he spots ideas like this in his sleep. Rook e8 is what you want to play. Watch out, bishop h5. There's a skewer there. The queen is in the front. That means you're going to lose material. So, oh, well, he walked right into it. Wow. And Jan reacts slightly. Magnus, he's blundered. He's lost the exchange for no compensation, I'm going to say here, Robert. It's an open oh. position. White's rooks are clearly better than the bishops. And I, I don't speak Norwegian, but I imagine the, there are some choice words coming from Magnus there. He, he's mad at himself. He's also still down about you know, 45 seconds on the clock. But look at this decision. That is, I mean, Magnus is mad. He's playing not so well. But that's, like, I think, a good choice from him. He needs to mix things up and make the position as complicated as possible. But it just seems like he's out of it now. He's moving quickly, but you can tell he, he feels like things have gone out of hand. Yeah, Magnus is tilted. He's trying to get back in the zone. You see a slightly curious look on Magnus's face, and that's when he's trying to imagine there's still hope. Okay, it's not so easy. You know, there's still some tactics, and he's right. He's got threats. Uh, Bishop takes Rook at some point, maybe, if you want to gain some material back. But, okay, the white pawn's super strong. Watch out, though. Uh -oh. Knight g3 is a nasty threat. Robert, still, still alive. And you can tell, like, Magnus is shaking his head right now, but Jan has to dig deep. I mean, he's rolling up his sleeves, but knight g3 is a serious threat. Bishop takes c1 will always be available. Bishop takes c1 right now wins that rook for free, right? Because a knight g3 check, knight e2 tactics to follow. So this is a challenging moment. I think rook c2 would be your temptation, but then bishop a4 is like, how does it feel? You hit me with a bishop h5, I'm going to hit you back with bishop a4, and we've got a game of it. Yeah, hit me with your best shot. Rook c2 is going to be hit in a variety of ways. There's also knight g3 check with another check to follow, and white's going to be tied up in knots, just trying to evade all of these threats. Wow, maybe e5, which I was actually about to praise as the most natural move, keeping control. Maybe it just allowed the black knight in unnecessarily, and suddenly three attacking pieces, white's defensive force is not perfectly coordinated. Robert, I think at the very minimum, Jan's going to burn half of his remaining time on the next couple of moves. And suddenly it's, uh, wow, lifeline for Magnus Carlsen. It's back to Wumpus over here. Like, what to do? <laughs> I, I actually think about the move G3 for white, which seems completely out of my mind. But I'm just trying to make sure that I have some space for the king. I, I think we have to remind everybody, including ourselves, that white needs to win this game, right? So if something happens where black is able to reestablish the material, Oh my goodness, knight g3, bishop e3, knight back to e4, is that what's up? Wow, I think you're right. I'm looking for all sorts of crazy checkmates, but knight g3, blue arrow shows it. I think it's by far the most obvious move. Um, the only other candidate would be to take on c1. You mentioned that's a free rook, Robert. That could be a temptation as well, at the very minimum. But uh, knight g3, check. Oh, do we jump in? Magnus has a few minutes. Maybe we just br quickly bring up an analysis board and show why this last move was a mistake by Yana Pomnishi. A check. You mentioned it's the most obvious. There is a pin on the H-file, so king. Unless you sacrifice your queen, king here, and maybe you survive if uh, black gives a check. You mentioned knight to e4. The other rook can defend. Still looks beautiful for black. White is tied up. 
Um, but the most decisive move seems to be actually in this position, just taking the rook because the other rook is attacked. Keep things clean oh. and simple. My goodness, and Magnus, of course, spots it. David, how tempting is it to play for tactics when you're down two exchanges? But sometimes when your opponent blunders, you just take one rook, and then you win the other if the knight's captured on f1. This is completely winning all of a sudden for black. And look at Jan's face. It's just eyes wide and shake of the head. He can't believe the luck that Magnus Carlsen had there. Let's face it, Magnus blundered first. Um, he can't believe that he lost control, Jan Nepomnyshi. But yeah, it looks over. Uh, the black knight can retreat, it takes a pawn in the process, white's getting checkmated almost, and blacks up on material. Oh my Wow, goodness. turnaround. I mean, what a quick turnaround, and how sad is this for Jan? He just caught Magnus, F4, was a really nice try by him. Magnus made a terrible mistake with bringing the rook to E8, but that rook takes E5 decision by Magnus, just complicating matters. It gave him a fighting chance, and not just a chance, it looks like it's gonna get him uh, the match victory. Yeah, yeah, you touched upon it there, Robert, but great tip again for everyone at home. We all blunder. We've all been there. We've all lost material. We've all walked into pins, forks, you name it, but just making things messy. Uh, the opponent wants control, especially when they're material up. Making things messy is the last thing they want, and uh, yeah, confusing the opponent, randomizing it, that's uh, often the best way forward. That's what Magnus can do. He's got all these different gears. That's the problem. He's the world number one. He's obviously a positional endgame genius, but... If he needs to randomize it, if he needs to uh, make that mess, he can. And he has, and looks like he's about to win, uh, thanks to that. And just, you, you can see it on Jan's face. He's like, what do I need to do to beat this guy? He already beat me in a world championship. Uh, he did, after that really long, hard-fought game with that material imbalance, you know, you felt like Jan sort of collapsed after that. I mean, Magnus also found his strength. But here... Magnus blundered in one turn and still wins. This is over now. It's completely done. It's over and we're about to see a resignation. Judging from the body language, Magnus Carlsen takes the Armageddon. Black gets the win. And what can we say, Robert? That was a crazy game. And Jan Napalm is out of there as fast as he can. I mean, he just gets rid of the camera. He says, I cannot believe this. But it doesn't matter how it happened. Magnus Carlsen wins the Armageddon game with the black pieces. He's not happy with his performance. That's clear, David. But it was still a match victory for Magnus back against the wall. Doesn't matter what people throw at him. He still seems to get the job done.